Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. discusses an analysis of three separate machloksin between Amaraim and Tanaim. The first machlokas that will be discussed, which we're in the middle of discussing, is a machlokas between Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Yehuda, the Tanaim, as to whether the tzitz of the Kohen Gadol takes off the problem of Tuma on Karbanos, even when it's not being worn. Rabbi Shimon says, yes, it works even if it's not being worn, and Rabbi Yehuda says, no. Now Rabbi Yehuda says, it's got to be worn. Now Rabbi Yehuda's source is from the Pasuk describing how the tzitz takes off the Yisra of Tuma. And the Pasuk says, if it's on Aaron's forehead, that is when and takes off the Yisra. So Mar says, what is Rabbi Shimon going to do with that? And Mar says, well, Rabbi Shimon will say that V'hayam doesn't tell you that it has to be on Aaron's forehead in order to take off the Yisra. That just tells you where the proper place of the tzitz is. It's supposed to be on his forehead. But it definitely works even if it's not there. So Mar says, well, how does Rabbi Yehuda know what the proper place for the forehead is? If the, if that Pasuk is teaching me that it has to be there in order to take off the Yisra, where do you see the, what the proper place is? So Gemara says, well, the source is from the end of the Pasuk. It says, V'hayam tamid. That's where it's always supposed to be. It's always supposed to be on his forehead. So Gemara says, well, why, why doesn't Rabbi Shimon learn the source, the location for the tits from there? So the Gemara concedes, you're right, he, that is where he learns it from. So Gemara says, well, then what does he do with the first Pasuk of V'hayam Mitzach Aaron? So Gemara says, V'hayam Mitzach Aaron, V'nasa Aaron, as the one of tells you that in order for the tits to work, it has to be the type of tits which could be on Aaron's forehead. If it's broken and he can't wear it, then no matter where it is, it doesn't take off the Isser. So Gemara says, how does Rabbi Yudah know that? Now Rabbi Yudah concedes the Mepharshim explained, Rabbi Huda holds that that's not true. Rabbi Huda holds he has to be wearing it. If it's broken, it certainly doesn't work. Um, it has to be working, it has to be fixed in the proper uh, state of repair and be worn in order for it to be used. But the question is that, according to Rabbi Huda, the Chiddush of Hayyam Yitzchakaron could teach me that it doesn't work if it's broken. How do you know that it goes so far as to say that it has to actually be worn? So Gemara says that uh, Rabbi Huda learns it from the extra vav. And it says, Mitzchoy, the Pasuk later, it says, Mitzchoy, that extra vav teaches me that it has to be something which is fitting to go on his forehead. And then you have a separate word, the word of Meitzach, earlier, that tells me that it has to actually be being worn. So Gemara says, well, why doesn't Rabbi Shimon use that drasha? So Gemara says, Rabbi Shimon holds that extra vav is not a source for a drasha, and therefore you don't learn anything from that. Okay, the Gemara now refers back to a machlekes, which we were discussing in the last half about whether Tumah is hotra or Dechuya B'Tzibor. That means when you're allowed to bring a carbon Tzibor, a public carbon, from something tummy, does that mean that it's totally permitted and there is no preference to try to use Tahar? Or is it, no, we allow it if there's no other choice, but you should definitely try to do everything you can to bring it Tahar. That would be called Dechuya. So Gemara says, maybe this is dependent on another machlokas Tanayim, which we will analyze at length. It's a three-way machlokas Tanayim, when the Paraduma water was sprayed on the Kohanim who were being uh, prepared, being set aside, being isolated to be Tahar. We know that the Kohen Agadol, who did the Avod on Yom Kippur, was set aside for seven days. He was isolated in order to make him Tahar and no Psal. And the same thing applied to the Kohen who was going to do the service of the Paraduma. So the Gemara says three. There's a brisa that has three opinions as to how they were sprinkled with paraduma water to try to take off any tuma tumas mace they may have had on them. And the three opinions are as follows: According to Rabbi Meir, both the Kohen Agadol that was being isolated in order to prepare him for the Yom Kippur service and the Kohen of the paraduma both were sprinkled every day over the seven days that they were isolated. Every day they had the paraduma water sprinkled on them. And the reason for that, as the Gemara will describe it later, is because we're supposed to put paraduma water on somebody on the third day after he became Tame and the seventh day after he became Tame. But we don't know when he became Tame. As a matter of fact, we don't know that he became Tame at all. We're doing this all out of concern. He may have become Tame. We don't know which day is which, so we don't know which day is the third day, which day is the seventh day. Therefore, we do it all of those days. And Rabbi Meir holds that this applies both to the Kohen and Gadol before him Kippur, and to the Kohen who is going to do the Paraduma service. Now, Rabbi Yaisi says, neither of them, they both get sprinkled only on the third and on the seventh day. The third and the seventh day of their isolation. You assume that they became Tummy on the last day, and you put Paraduma water on them, then you don't have to do it every single day. And Rabbi Hanin, Eskana Kahanim, says that there's a difference. The Kohen Gadol who's going to do the Paraduma water you sprinkle on him every day. The one who is 
going to do the service of the paraduma, the avoda of the paraduma, he gets sprinkled every day of his isolation. The Kohen Agadol before Yom Kippur gets only on the third and the seventh day of his isolation. So the Gemara says, what's this machlokas over here? So the Gemara wants to say, maybe the machlokas is dependent on Tomochotra or Dchuya. Rabbi Meir, um, who says that he has to be sprinkled every day, he's really concerned there might be Toma that came on him on any day. And therefore, any of these days might be the third or the seventh day. And therefore, he's got to sprinkle every single day, because he holds Toma Duchuya, and we really want to try to avoid Toma of all sorts. Rabbi Yoisi, who holds, he holds Toma Hutro, and therefore Toma is not a real problem, and therefore you don't have to be so concerned to sprinkle every day. Where it says, could that really be the Machokas? If Rabbi Yoisi held Toma Hutro, he wouldn't need you to sprinkle on the third and the seventh day either. He, he would say, Toma is totally fine. Why are we even bothering to put Paraduma water on him, to sprinkle on him, to be a Matarian from a Toma which we don't even know exists? Somewhere it says, therefore, that's not the Peshat. The Peshat is that really both of them agree that Toma is only Dechuya, and therefore Toma is a problem. We want to try to get rid of the Toma. The thing is like this, their machokas is, do you have to hit the right day? Do you have to actually get it on the third and the seventh day of their Tumah in order to be a Matahar them? According to Rabbi Meir, it's a mitzvah to get it properly on the third and the seventh day. And we learned that from the fact that we know that Tevila, when a person supposed to, is able to go to the mikvah, he's supposed to go to the mikvah in the right day. When his seventh day of Tumah is up, he's supposed to go to the mikvah that day. He's not supposed to leave it for a different time. And the same thing, and uh, because, therefore, he needs to go to the mikvah on the right day, uh, the same thing applies to the sprinkling has to be on the right day. And therefore, it all has to be on the right days. And because we don't know what the right day is, we have to do it every day. Rabbi Yossi says, no, it's okay if it's the wrong day. You'll do it on the third and the seventh day. We don't know when he became Tomei. Maybe this is really the third and the seventh day. Maybe it's the 50th and the 100th day. I don't know when he became Tomei. doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be on the exact right day. It, it has to be on any set of days. You have to have a sprinkling of Paraduma water, and four days later, sprinkling again as if it would be the third and the seventh day, four days later, and then on the seventh day, which is the last day, the, the day of the second sprinkling, then you go to the mikvah. It doesn't have to be the third and the seventh the dafka after it became Talmud. It just has to be f- f- four days apart, not earlier than the third and the seventh day. And that's what their machlokas is. Therefore, Rabbi Meir says sprinkle them every day because you have to hit the right day. And Rabbi Meir says choose any third and seventh, call it the third and the seventh. You know that it's not earlier than third and seventh, maybe it's later than third and seventh, no big deal. And that's when you do the paradigm order. The Gemara says it's a nice shot, but it can't be correct because I'll show you that Rabbi Meir holds that a person's purification does have to be on the right day. It can't be on any day. It has to be on the exact right day. Where do you see that? It's that Abraham is discussing somebody who needs to go to the mikvah, but he has a shame Hashem, he has the name of Hashem written on his skin. And we're afraid that he, if he if he goes into the water, it'll get erased, and he'll violate the issue of erasing a shame Hashem. And the Gemara quotes Abraham, which has as follows, somebody has a shame Hashem written on his skin, should not bathe, should not rub oil on himself, should not stand in a place of uncleanliness. He has to treat his skin that has a shame with a special uh, reverence and strict halachos that any Shem Hashem has. Now what if he needs to go to the mikvah? He has tefillah's mitzvah. He has to be metahir himself. So the Tanakhama says he should wrap a reed around it so it doesn't get erased. It'll get wet, but it will be protected from strong occurrence. And he should go to the mikvah. He'll do his best to avoid it being erased. Rebbe says no. Just go to the mikvah without wrapping anything on it. Just be careful not to rub it, so hopefully it won't get erased, but don't wrap anything around it. And the reason Rabbi Yossi says not to wrap anything around it, the Gemara understands, is because if we're going to wait until he goes and finds something to wrap, he's going to miss his day. We want to make sure that he gets his day right. So you see Rabbi Yossi holds that the day is very important. You can't push it off a day or two. So Rabbi Yossi does hold that the Tahara process has to be done on the right day. So how can we explain Rabbi Yossi in our Mishnah that says that he only has to sprinkle the 3rd and 7th, that the Tahara doesn't have to be performed in the right day? So the Gemara answers, it's a difference between the going to the mikvah and the sprinkling. Everybody agrees that the going to the mikvah, both Rabbi Yaisi here and Rabbi Meir agree that the sprinkling, that the tevil on the mikvah has to be done on the right day. The sprinkling, do you learn through a hekish of sprinkling to mikvah tevila that they both have to be on the right day? Rabbi Yaisi holds no. The tevila in the mikvah has to be the right day. The sprinkling, choose any third and seventh day, as long as it's not too early, it doesn't matter if it's too late. Rabbi Meir, however, says, no, it has to be on the exact right day, and therefore we're going to try to do every day of his isolation in order to make sure we try to hit an actual third and seventh day of his isolation. All right, Nehemiah says, now, what then is the opinion of Rabbi Chinin Eskana Kehana? Hakim says that there's a difference between the Paraduma Kohen and the Yom Kippur Kohen. Should have to be the same. Which way does he hold? Does he hold it has to be the right day, or it doesn't have to be the right day? Nehemiah says, uh, simple, Rabbi Chinin Eskana Kehana holds 
that it does not have to be the right day. Why do you have to sprinkle the Paraduma coin every day? Special high level of Tahara we want for the Paraduma coin, like we seen earlier in the Masechda, we want to make sure that the, that the Tzedukim understand that the requirement for Tahara is very high, and we want to therefore do whatever we can, and therefore we sprinkle on him every single day of his isolation. Okay, the Gemara now brings another Brisa, and the Gemara wants to know which of these three Tanaim can be the author of this Brisa. The Brisa says um, that there is only one main indifference between the Kohen who does the Paraduma uh, and his isolation, and the Kohen who does the Yom Kippur service and his isolation. And that difference is the reason for their isolation, and therefore the halacha of who's allowed to be with him. The Kohen who does the Parduma's isolation is for Tahara, and therefore we don't let any other Kohanim come in to touch him. We don't want them to be Matame him by accident. The Kohen who's doing the Yom Kippur service, that's not for Tahara, that's for a higher level of spirituality, a higher level of Ruchnius, that's why he's being isolated, and people allowed to touch him are not worried about the Tumah. So Gemara says, who, who is this? So Gemara says, this Tana has to be either Rabbi Meir or Rabbi Yaisi. It cannot be Rabbi Hanin Eskana Kahana for the simple reason that this price says that there are no other differences between the Kohen who's being isolated for Paraduma and the Kohen who's being isolated for Yom Kippur. However, according to Rabbi Hanin Eskana Kahana, there is another difference. The, the, the difference is when do they get sprinkled? The one that's isolated for Paraduma gets sprinkled every day of his isolation, and the one that's isolated for Yom Kippur only gets sprinkled on the third and on the seventh day. Okay, now the Gemara analyzes the concept of sprinkling him every day. What's the purpose of sprinkling? water on him every day. The Gemara explains that we don't know which day he was Tame. Did he become Tame the day before we isolated him? Or maybe the day before that? Or maybe the day before that? What is the day? So the Gemara says we have to sprinkle him on the first day and on the fifth day. That I understand. Because maybe he became Tame two days before his isolation began. And therefore the first day of his isolation is the third day of his Tama. And the fifth day of his isolation is the seventh day of his Tama. Right? Each day add two because he became Tame two days earlier. Now, we also have to sprinkle on him on the second day and on the sixth day of isolation because maybe he became Tame a day before, and therefore um, it's his the uh, the the second day of his isolation is his third day of Tama, and the sixth day of isolation is his seventh day of Tama. Now he also has to be sprinkled on the third and on the seventh day of his isolation because maybe he became Tame just before his isolation, and therefore this is the third and the seventh. Good, I understand that all. My question is the fourth day. Why should we sprinkle him on the fourth day? It can't be the third day of his Tumah because he's been in isolation for the last four days. He couldn't have become Tumah within the last three days. And it can't be the seventh day because he wasn't sprinkled four days earlier. And if he wasn't sprinkled four days earlier, it doesn't help to sprinkle the seventh day without having sprinkled the third day. So what's the point of sprinkling the fourth day? So the Gemara says, you're right, they didn't sprinkle the fourth day. The, when we said you sprinkle every day, it, was not, it wasn't specifically every day. We left out some of the details. There is at least one day that you don't sprinkle, and that's the fourth day. And that's okay. And I'll prove it to you, because there has to be another day that, that you do not sprinkle, and that's Shabbos. It's an Isidur to sprinkle Paraduma water on somebody on Shabbos, because you're like being attacking him, you're like fixing him. You're taking his Tuma off, you're not allowed to do that on Shabbos. So obviously they didn't sprinkle him on Shabbos. When we said we sprinkle all seven, there was Lav Dafka, all seven. It was as many as we can. So here also, it's a really only uh, the seven days except for the fourth, because the fourth is no point in sprinkling. So the Gemara says, this being the case, so when we're discussing the Paraduma service, we'll try to make sure that the fourth day comes out on the Shabbos. You can't sprinkle on the Shabbos, and you don't sprinkle on the fourth, so try to work it out that you start on a Wednesday, so that the fourth day of Shabbos, you only miss one day. However, it's before Yom Kippur, so we don't have control over the schedule. Whenever Yom Kippur comes out, it comes out. We isolate him seven days earlier. If Yom Kippur, if the fourth day comes out on Shabbos, you'll sprinkle six days. If not, you'll miss the fourth day and Shabbos, and therefore you'll only sprinkle a total of five days. You'll miss two days. All right. The Gemara now discusses, it refers back to the Mishnah earlier in the beginning of the Masechta, which said, you isolate the coin before Yom Kippur in the Lishkas Parhedrin, the office of the Parhedrin. Parhedrin is a word that means messengers, uh, officers of the king. The Gemara says, how does it get this name? So the Gemara quotes a Brisa. Rabbi Huda says that it was originally called Lishkas Levati. Levati means princes. Or another word which means uh, officers. Um, and that was the original name. That's what it was called. Now, the name was changed because throughout the times of the later Hashmanayim who were installed themselves as king, there were Kahanim who would bribe their way to become Kahanim Gidolim. Or even regular people who would bribe their way, they would purchase the office of Kahuna Gidola. 
and uh, they would get the job, but they wouldn't survive the year because they were Rishayim, and they went into the Kodesh HaKadoshim, they died. And therefore, there was a new one every 12 months. After Yom Kippur, they needed a new Kohen Gadol, and somebody else would bribe his way into the p- position. And what they would do is, with their vast funds, they would rebuild these, this Lishkas Parhedrin every year, and they would name it after themselves. So this so this Lishkas Parhedrin was rebuilt every year. So they named it, like the Parhedrin, they named it the Lishka of the officers, because it's just like the officer of the king, where you appoint a new one every year, and you have a whole uh, new officer every year. Here also you have a whole new Lish Gaspar Hedron every year, because Kahanam and Gedolim were building it and bribing their way into the job. In the first place. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzhak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.